Good morning, and welcome to Rose City Park Presbyterian Church. I'm Amy. Thank you for joining us this morning. We acknowledge that this gathering of Rose City Park Presbyterian Church is occurring in the traditional land of the Chinook, Cowlitz, Clackamas, Kalapuya, and Atfalati people. And we offer our gratitude to the elders past and present who have stewarded it through the generations. You have been muted so that we can focus on worship. When we come to the passing of the peace, you will be able to unmute yourself and share your voices of greetings. After the passing of the peace, you will once again be muted until fellowship time, which will immediately follow worship. During worship, you may find it easier to follow along if you use speaker view. And now let us worship God. Welcome to worship with Rose City Park Presbyterian Church. As you could tell, Heidi is out of town, so we ask um, all of your prayers for safe travels for her. So today we have a few announcements. Um, today at four, we'll have the Sunday Salon, and I believe it is all about Pinterest. So if you have interest in Pinterest, come at four to the Sunday Salon. Next week, we have a special speaker. It's Palm Sunday, and we have Doug Dix from Bethlehem. He will be speaking with us. He's a mission worker there and has been for a very long time. I happened to visit him with friends in Bethlehem in 1996, and he's been there the whole time. 
So he will have much to say next to us next week. And there will also be an adult ed next week, probably on Holy Week and how we can celebrate it. This is our last full week to really think about Lent. And then next week is Holy Week. So Ray has an announcement for us. Thank you, Paulette. As a member church of the Interfaith Alliance, we are invited on June 7th to talk to Dr. Nicholas Kristoff about his book, Tightrope. And in the meantime, we're invited to read the book. And on Monday, tomorrow, we have an opportunity Ray, you accidentally got muted. Uh, so there you are. You're okay now. Okay, now. Okay. Keep, your hand away from that. keep my hand away from the buttons. <laughs> um, I don't know where we were, but we have an excellent opportunity to meet N Nicholas Kristoff, uh, who is the author of Tightrope about poverty in rural Oregon and the United States. And we're going to do that with the Interfaith Alliance on June 7th. But tomorrow night is the rebroadcast of an excellent documentary about tightrope on OPB at nine o'clock. Uh, Woody and I are recording this so we can watch it before our bedtime. And we hope you can do that too. I have a second announcement and that is to thank everyone who came uh, yesterday to get blue bags for the bottle drop. If you weren't able to do that then and you would like blue bags, please uh, contact me or Woody. And I want to thank George and John for working out the bookkeeping for this project. Uh, the money will go to the Northeast Emergency Food Program. If you can't take your bottles and cans to the bottle drop, please contact me because I will help you do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Isn't it wonderful how we've all gotten so good at technology? We've all come so far and it's wonderful that we can have announcements. So now Thad has a moment for mission for us. Good morning all. Uh, one great hour of sharing as we've said before, this is our 70th year in this project ongoing having raised millions of dollars over the, the past 70 years and probably will spend out into the communities worldwide well over $5 million this year. So we encourage you to either write the church a check with a memo line, one in great hour of sharing, or to go to the website and contribute online with the drop down menu there at Donate. And let me tell you just three places where your money has gone in the past. Talking about not only self-development of people and disaster assistance, but ending poverty and hunger in isolated areas as best we can. In Missoula, Montana, there's a prisoner reentry program called Welcome Back, where some recently re released and um, people who have been outside the prison system for several years have gotten together to form a group that, that provides assistance to those citizens returning to their communities. And not only an adv advocacy program, but to develop leadership skills within that group to keep them ongoing. In, in Panama, Las Tablas is a group of indigenous ladies who have taken money to create workspace workshops and a warehouse so that they can create traditional garments in Panamanian styles, not only to provide uh, themselves a, a workplace and perhaps to sell the, their wares beyond the local area, but to provide people who can afford their products a marketplace and at the same time teaching people in the community and people who buy their products about their culture and their traditions. And in the area of food justice, 
Agricultura in Albuquerque, New Mexico is a program that takes people living on the margins of society and helping them with food justice so that they can have fresh vegetables, fresh fruits from sustainable local growers, which helps the farmers, but also so that people can be taught about nutrition and have good food to eat. So just a few examples of what your one great hour sharing dollars will do here and around the world. So Lee Moiso had the idea since this is the 70th year. If you are able, maybe you can make your contribution in some multiple of $70. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Thad. And now um, just want to lift up a few prayers that are on our hearts and minds. We have some of us who are going through tests to determine the pathways um, to conquer illnesses. And we lift up those people and we pray for people as they walk through ambiguity of new diagnoses and um, all that that means. And we lift up any among us who are sick and who are recovering from different procedures. We lift up all of those who are grieving and who are facing difficult times. And now um, Sharon Cousineau has an announcement and then will lead us into worship. Good morning. Well, my announcement is just to give a little brief description of uh, what the personnel committee does for the church. Um, I'm the chair of the personnel committee. And so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about our work. Um, we're a small committee made up of, um, our members are Bob Black, Bobby Roberts, Steve Smith, and of course myself as chair. Uh, we meet monthly and sometimes more lately, almost always more than monthly. <laughs> We've got a lot going on right now. Um, and Paulette is also uh, in attendance at our meetings. Um, the work that we do for the church, uh, it's things that you might expect. We um, advertise for, interview, and hire office staff. We uh, work with various committees and the staff that's already on board to review and update job descriptions. Uh, we review <clears throat> annual performance evaluations and <clears throat> salaries. Uh, and then we draft the personnel committee budget to present to session for their approval. Uh, the budget would include pay raises and increases for contracted employees. We also organize an annual retreat for committee and staff, although that has not happened uh, lately because of COVID. Um, we provide an annual report to, to the session and to the church to be included in the, the bigger annual report every year. And uh, we've had a big fall um, and winter. We hired an office manager and a bookkeeper. And unfortunately the bookkeeper resigned and now we're going to going through the process again to get another bookkeeper. And um, our next big task after this is, is turning to uh, selecting an interim pastor, which we have already um, put together a small committee for and we're, we're actually gonna meet this afternoon for the first time. So that's pretty much us in a nutshell. Um, feel free to call me or email me or anything if you ever have a question. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to worship. Please join us in the call to worship. You are here and you belong. We belong to the one who created our hearts. Come and enter into God's presence with praise. God calls to our hearts. Come and see. Come and taste. 
And now we continue worship with hymn 692, Spirit Open My Heart. Now join us in this litany of confession and intention. In this week before Holy Week, it seems fitting for us to focus on our intentions for Lent. We come to you, most holy and gracious God. With hearts longing to do your will in this world, in this your world, we often miss the mark and lose our way. Yet you invite us again to come and see. In following you, we are called to embrace some things and let others go. Let us fast from hurting words and say kind words. Let us fast from wallowing in sadness and be filled with gratitude. Let us fast from anger and be filled with patience. Let us fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Let us fast from worries and trust in God. Let us fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Let us fast from pressures and be prayerful. Let us fast from bitterness and fill our hearts with joy. Let us fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Let us fast from grudges and be reconciled. Let us fast from words and be silent so that we can listen. 
let us listen to God's call to the heart. Hear these words of assurance. Our hearts are filled with your covenant, O Lord. You have forgiven us and made us new in Christ. Amen. And now let us sing, Lord Jesus Christ. Our hearts welcome Christ's love. In doing so, we are filled with peace and able to pass that on to others. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace with everybody. Peace be with you. 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 Peace Rick Harlow. So let's all come and gather. Okay, so I'm on. You can hear? Good. So I was looking at the screen and I only saw two children. So thank you, Paulette, for saying that, um, mentioning that we all are children of God. And so I would like to have you all participate. So good morning. My name is Rick, and I want you to raise your hand if you have had a birthday this year. So I can't see all the screens, so I don't know who's raising their hand. So now raise your hand if you've not had a birthday this year, but you're going to have one later. There we go, good, good. So yesterday was March 20th, right? Good, good. Well, on March 20th, 1928, a boy named Fred was born. When Fred grew up, he wanted to teach children of all ages different ways to get along, to be like good neighbors to each other. He had a TV show and told stories and wrote songs and poetry. I am going to read two poems this morning. The first one he called Good Morning God. The sun is up and so are we, all set to start the day. 
we're wide awake and ready now. Will you please show the way? You've kept us safe the whole night through. Please guide us all day long. Give us a smile for everyone, a word of cheer, a song. Is there a job for us to do, a special task, a test? With help from you, we hope we too can make this day our best. Good morning, sun. Good morning, sky. We greet you with a nod. This day will be our special day. A good, good morning, God. Lost my screen here. So. Sorry about that. Wasn't that a great poem? Fred wrote that with God's help, we can be kind to our neighbor and be hopeful that today will be our best day. I like it when there is someone helping us and we are not alone. Won't it be great when this COVID pandemic is over? And it will be nice to have friends and family and your church family around to share your happiness and to help you through bad times. I miss hugging my friends or shaking hands when I meet someone. Yesterday was the first day of spring. Have you been outside and seen the bright colors? I think that God knows that it has been a really tough year for many people, children and parents, aunts and uncles and grandparents and great grandparents too. Some people get sad or depressed when it is dark and rainy or if something bad has happened. Maybe God is sending us sunshine and pretty plants and flowers to give us hope for better times. I know a way to give people the present of joy. Can you all look at the screen and wave and smile at your church neighbors? I'm gonna read a second poem now that Fred wrote. He wrote many. It's called, it's you I like. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair. But it's you I like. The way you are right now. The way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you. Not your toys. They're just beside you. But it's you I like. Every part of you your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope that you'll remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself. It's you. It's you I like. And all God's people said, amen. Wow, thank you, Rick. <laughs> and thank God for Mr. Rogers. And now we have more talent shared from our congregation, special music with Rebecca Dennis. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim's journey, I want Jesus to walk with me in my trial lord walk with me in my trial lord walk with me when the shades of life are falling i want jesus to walk with me.
Thank you, Rebecca. And we continue to walk with Jesus by hearing the prayer for illumination and the scripture readings. We're having some technical troubles. All right, here we are. So I'm going to start off with a prayer of illumination. Pray with me, Almighty God, for whose words we have survived the ages. Open our hearts to hear its telling anew, our minds to know your truth, and our hearts to receive your grace, that we may share the promise of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. First reading, Jeremiah chapter 30, 31 through 34. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant which I made with their fathers, where I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant, which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And then our second reading is John chapter 12, 20 through 34. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida Beth in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves this life loses it, and he who hates this life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. The voice, then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it and said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. And I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all men to myself. He said, this is this you show by what death was to, my, was to die. The, the, that's it. I wrote a little too far there. <laughs> my bad. Aaron that ends the reading. Thank you, Gunner. It's so brave to read and do anything I think over Zoom, <laughs> I'm proud of all of you. Let's pray, please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, amen. 
Well, you and I have almost made it through Lent. Lent is a tough journey. I will admit that I like to jump over the cross to the resurrection. I like Hallmark movies and happy endings. I loved the blue Smurfs growing up, but I hated Gargamel who tried to catch them. I found him unnecessary. Why do we have to have conflict in everything? Can't there just be singing and joy all the time? So I found myself wanting to get out of writing this sermon, not because I had too much to do, but because I knew I would have to walk with Jesus through the grief of his last days. So I even asked Donovan if she would be willing to preach, knowing inside that I needed to do it. Well, when Donovan declined the offer, I knew it was me that was going to get to wrestle with this text. And honestly, it has been a huge blessing. So let's walk together through this text in John. The Greeks went to Philip and said, we want to see Jesus. Jesus had just come into Jerusalem for Passover and was welcomed with palms and praise. A group of Greeks who had come to the festival wanted to see Jesus. They wanted a moment of connection and relationship with this great hero of the hour. I can totally understand this. I bet you can too. Over my years of college, seminary, and living in New York City, I had the opportunity to hear many great speakers. Some were even famous, like Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu and Elie Wiesel. But the speakers I really remember are the ones that I saw, felt, and experienced firsthand, face-to-face. -face. Like when Billy Graham preached at Montreat Chapel, on the way out of the chapel, I shook his big, gentle hands and looked into his kind eyes and shared a moment of connection. He was such a giant man in so many ways, and it was just such a lovely encounter. Barbara Brown Taylor, um, who has been in the top 25 of preachers and the only woman to be in that group for years, she came to speak at Princeton Seminary, and I hung on her every word. I was on the second row, and I was intently listening, and I felt like she was looking at me. And then at the coffee time after her lecture, I shook her hand and told her how much I appreciated her speech, and she said, it was you I was looking at the whole time. I said, I know. And we both laughed and had this real tender moment of connection and, um, and joy. And in 2000, I went with 40 other students to the Papal Palace in the Vatican for a private audience with Pope John Paul II. We climbed the marble stairs and were met in the Pope's apartment. He spoke of unity and the whole church and how he forgave the man who shot him. He went to visit him in prison and offered his forgiveness. It was so beautiful and I was awestruck. And afterwards, each one of us got to shake his hand and my Catholic friends knelt before him and called him Papa and they embraced. And I merely just shook his hand, but I got to look into his eyes. It was a moment I'll never forget. Well, shaking hands, eye contact, words shared and connections made. These personal encounters, this is what the Greeks wanted from Jesus. They wanted to see him. I hope and pray for such an encounter with Jesus for my children and for each one of you and for myself in this congregation. Well, usually requests for encounters with Jesus in the Gospel of John were met with the phrase, come and see. Like when Jesus met Andrew and Simon, and when Philip told Nathaniel about Jesus. And if we remember the Samaritan woman, she told the whole city to come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. They all came and saw and were not disappointed. 
but this time was different. The Greeks representing the whole world came to Philip who went to Andrew. You can see the church at work and committees and together they went to Jesus who did not say come and see. This time was after a plot to kill Jesus had been planned. And Mary had, re had anointed Jesus with a pound of costly perfume for his future burial. And Jesus had entered Jerusalem to a praising crowd waving palm branches that he knew wouldn't last forever. This time was different. Instead of come and see, Jesus said, the hour has come. Now, if we remember at the wedding of Cana, when his mother asked Jesus to resupply the wine, he said, woman, which I've always hated, but that apparently was a normal way to address woman, said, my hour has not yet come. And again, when Jesus' brothers said, show yourself to the world, Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Well, this time Jesus says the hour has come. And he begins his last public discourse. This seems to be a real crisis moment for Jesus. The grief of his impending death had taken on a tangible quality. It hung in the air like a heavy cloud. Jesus speaks of a grain of wheat falling to the earth and dying so that it can bear much fruit. He says, my soul is troubled. He tells the disciples that the light is with you for only a little longer. This was the moment that hinged between the very much alive ministry of Jesus and his last night with his closest friends and disciples, his betrayal, arrest, the day before he breathed his last. Well, we see this through the lens of the resurrection and of Christ's divinity, but let us not forget the humanity of Jesus too. In Philippians, we are reminded that Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus' humanity shows up here and there. Like Jesus wept at the death of Lazarus, even though he knew the outcome would be life restored. Humanity includes grief and grief is important. Grief is necessary. And that is what a lot of us are doing right now. We grieve over the last year of missing out on seeing family, on the death of loved ones, on just getting to go to the grocery store unafraid. And we also weep as the church for and with our Asian brothers and sisters after the murders in Atlanta and after years of suffering injustice and invisibility. As we see, we grieve. Did you know that throughout the years of movies and TV shows in America, that most Asian heroes and other characters have been played by white actors. One Asian American activist said that Asian Americans desire agency. He said they want to be seen as people. And Desiree Ocampo was kind enough to send over an article <clears throat> from Christianity Today. And in it, it had eight Asian American leaders who were asked what they want the church to know right now. And here are a few things. One leader, Vivian Mambuni said, she wants the church to know these things. I want you to know, to learn Asian American history. I want you to see, to stop erasing, stop seeing Asian Americans as the perpetual foreigner. I want you to care. I want you to step in, to commit to speaking up anytime you witness anti-Asian sentiments in your family, among your friends, and out in public. I want you to know that we, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, are hurting and are tired. May we know, see, care, step in, and be there. 
Well, like the reformer Karl Barth said, we hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. The good news of the gospel demands that we hold several things all together. We hold both grief and hope. We hold both the reality of the gospel and the reality of the day. Today, there is much suffering and grief. Today, we are called to walk with Jesus in his grief as death and sacrifice became more real than it had ever felt. While knowing that his death led to life and fruit, he was still deeply troubled. Today, we are also called to embody the spirit of Christ as the church. We are called the body of Christ. This is not a small calling, but a huge, awesome responsibility and a mystery not to be taken lightly. How do we be the body of Christ in our broken world today? How can we honor all of God's image bearers? In your life, in my life, what does it mean to see deeply the experience of a person or group without having lived it? Maybe one thing we can do is offer deep connection to others. Slowing down and looking people in the eyes, taking time to hear, to really hear what is being said and not said. We can even begin with our families and those we interact with at the grocery store. Remember when Kaya Sand came to talk to us about street routes? She invited us to be curious about the lives of others. A holy curiosity. This would involve slowing down to see and to care. I believe that everyone here cares. We all care. But maybe we speed through life only seeing what we want to see or what we think we need to see. Lord, help us to slow down. Well, there is so much hope. The drama of Christ does eventually have a happy ending, but we are only watching part of the movie today or hearing part of the story. For now, we are with the disciples and the light is with them only a little longer. Of course, we know in our heart of hearts that life again comes into Christ's body and he ascends to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, praying for us and teaching and leading us even now. Sometimes, like the Greeks, we long for connection with Jesus, and we don't find it right away. We want the intimate connection with Jesus. We want to have an encounter. Well, let us not give up trying, for when we seek that connection, we will find it. And we continue to faithfully gather together and worship every Sunday morning to meet the risen Lord like on that first Easter. I do believe that someday we will meet the risen Lord face to face and heart to heart. And that connection will be the most awesome experience we could ever imagine. So let's journey together as the church through this last part of Lent and let's honor all of God's precious image bearers. Amen. Now we sing the hymn, God's Call to Us. I'm glad that Amy put in the chat to please go and get 
something to eat and something to drink. Indeed, go <laughs> do that. Now is the time. You will not be shut out of the banquet. So together we will partake when we hear the words, the gifts of God for the people of God. And now join us. The Lord be with you. Yeah, we are. And also with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. We Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, O God, in this dry and weary land. You set a table for us in the wilderness and provide for all our needs. Even when we complain against you, you feed us with bread from heaven. When we quarrel and question your grace, you give us water from a stone. So how can we keep silent? Even dry bones in the valley of death stand to sing your praise. We give thanks and praise for Jesus our way in the wilderness, our companion in the desert. He knows our hunger and thirst. He gives us bread of life to eat and living water to drink. He leads us beside still water and prepares this table for us, even in the presence of our enemies. And the cup of blessing overflows. We remember with thanksgiving our Lord's Passover meal, shared with his, his closest of friends, when he took bread and he blessed it saying, this is my body, take and eat remembering me. And we remember how on that same night, Jesus took a cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of you remembering me. So now pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread, this cup, and these people. By the power of your spirit, breathe life into our dust and hope into our bones. Make us one flesh and one blood, one in the body of Christ. Let us live to sing your praise and show your love to all until our wilderness wandering is over. And we feast with you forever in the land you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, O God, now and always. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for the many gifts that you have given us. We thank you that you've even given us your very self. God, we pray that we will be nourished for the work that you have for us, work of justice and peace and for coming and seeing even when the hour has come. God, now we pray as your son Jesus taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And now we have a time of prayer together where you can lift things up in the chat and we will, together we will pray for them. So let us pray. Oh Lord, this year has been longer than any year that we thought was possible. Lord, we lift up any concerns and requests we have coming out of this year, God. We have a fresh spring here for us now, but we remember that this is the time when things shut down. And God, we lift up to you things from our community. We lift up all of those experiencing prejudice for safe travels for our families. We lift up student teachers and staff returning to school buildings. Lord, we lift up all of those who have lost loved ones. We lift up those facing long treatments. We lift up Gala to recover from knee surgery and work with PT. No serious increase in COVID following spring break. Lord, we pray that the pandemic will finally abate. We pray for an end to gun violence in our area and around the country and the world. We pray for a warm place to rest and food to nourish. We pray for people living in the cycle of poverty. We pray for Paul with his last test on his heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we thank you for this community and we ask your blessings on them. And we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Lord, we lift up in the chat things that we are most thankful for. And we continue to pray for our homeless neighbors. We're thankful for daffodils. We're thankful for Mr. Rogers. We're thankful for amazing grace, for vaccines. that every day more friends and family get vaccines. For families that work together and have fun doing it. For God's forgiveness. For the songs of birds and the warmth of the sun. For our creative church community, for cherry blossoms. God, you fill our cups to overflowing and we thank you for all that you have given us, God. And we praise you and thank you for swimming and for God's healing hand, among other things. And God, we lift these up to you and we honor you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we sing, Together We Serve, hymn 767.
we both love and are challenged by all the technology. <laughs> but such a blessing it's been. And now hear these words of blessing and charge. May the God of abundant love and mercy fill you with such joy and purpose that love overflows into the crevices of the brokenness of the world and heals all in its path. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. our worship service. Thank you for joining us today. Please remain connected if you wish to participate in our fellowship time.